Now SJT is often one of the most overlooked sections of the UCAT when it comes to preparation. However, it is one of the most important and easiest to see signs of improvement in during your preparation. In my own experiences, I went from scoring band freeze in my preparations to getting a band one using the tips and tricks which I will go over in this video. So stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. That intro had way too much energy. I'm going to be talking to you guys about the SJT. How can you prepare for it? How can you get a band one? Now, SJT is a measure of how ethical and moral of a doctor you will become essentially. Now, if you want to find out about the general structure of the UCAT or specifically the SJT section, the number of questions that you have, the timings, check out my What is the UCAT 2020 video that I posted on my channel. I'll put it in the information bar or in the description bar below. It has everything think you need about the details. Now yes. before we progress I want to thank Medify for partnering up with me for this video and on this channel guys you will know that I will preach about the importance of practice. You won't see improvement unless you practice and Medify is such an amazing bank of questions for you to have the most amount of practice as possible. So they have over 10,000 questions for you to, to have access to. They have eight full mocks and 18 mini mocks, timed and untimed questions for you to make sure that you're getting your exam condition preparation preparation in there. Now anyways if any of you are interested in that I'm going to leave a link to Medify in the description bar below. With that said let's get started with the video. <laughs> type of questions that you get in SJT. In that way you'll be able to master each type of question individually. Now the first type of question is your appropriate questions. You'll be given a scenario and you'll be asked how appropriate is it to perform that action by that character in that scenario and it's so important that we define each of the options available because it is a spectrum ranging from very inappropriate to very appropriate. So the very appropriate actions to do usually deal with the situation that you have at hand and there are usually no negative impacts or consequences brought about by their action. Now the appropriate but not ideal responses again deal with the situation at hand but usually there are better ways at going about it. There are usually alternatives that have less negative impacts. Now inappropriate but not awful responses are not the best responses in that situation in that period of time. However the negative impacts and consequences are minimal. Now very inappropriate responses are usually the worst response that you could have to that situation and will usually make that situation worse and aggravate it. Now the next kind of question is the importance questions and again you're given a scenario and you're asked to assess how important each of these considerations are in deciding whether you as a junior doctor, medical student, as a friend should perform that action. Now again it's so important that you know what each of the levels of importance mean. So very important considerations or factors are usually key pivotal factors that are essential for you to consider. Important factors are just as the name says important but not essential for you to consider. Of minor importance considerations are usually mildly relevant. They probably won't be useful for you to take into account when deciding whether to do that action or not. However, it won't be harmful or cause any negative impacts if you do um, take it into consideration. Now, not important considerations are completely irrelevant to the scenario and shouldn't change your opinion as to whether you should do that action or not. <laughs> So guys, I understand that it may seem like I've just bombarded you with all these keywords and it may seem overwhelming, but if I can filter it down to just one tip, it would be to just practice, practice, practice. Practice exposing yourself to the different types of questions so you can figure out which ones you're stronger at and which ones you're weaker at. Iron out the ones that you're weaker at, put more of your time into the weaker ones so you can turn them into strengths because there's no point practicing questions you're already gonna get right or you're already good at. One thing that I love about Medify is that once you've done enough questions, they actually separate out the questions types for you and they show you your performance for each of the individual sections so you get like a visual representation of how you're doing and you can kind of orientate a revision based on that. <laughs> SJT is a difficult section because our personal intuition telling us what we would do often clashes with what we should do. What you should do is the most professional response in that situation. Naturally, as you know, students, there are things that we morally should do, which we wouldn't necessarily do and vice versa. For example, you report in like your friend for cheating in like a classroom exam. I personally would not do it. However, you know, the GMC requires us to do that out of integrity. In SJT, you are called to assume the role of the character 
matter stated in the question. And you must be aware of such a role and what responsibilities are required. It is likely that you won't be able to identify with all the characters stated in the scenarios. A lot of us, you know, aren't junior doctors. However, through practicing, through continuously exposing yourself to SJT questions, you will learn more about what is required as a junior doctor, as a medical student, as a friend, as a student on work experience placement, and how you should respond accordingly. One thing that we must understand and is key to a lot of the non-medical scenarios is that you can still expect you to apply the core fundamental medical and ethical principles, such as professionalism, keeping confidentiality, integrity, respect, trust, and all those important things. And again, as I said before, the only way you can familiarize yourself with what you should do is through practice and also reading the GMC's um, guidelines to good medical practice. It's a document that I will link down in the description bar below and has highly been recommended for SGT practice. This isn't really a tip, but rather a scaffolding on, of how to approach each of the scenarios. And number one is to identify the character that you are assumed to be. As I mentioned earlier, this is so important as different characters will have varying levels of responsibility and jurisdiction. For example, medical students will be limited in the degree of medical like procedures that they'll be able to do. They'll need supervisions, whereas you know a qualified doctor may not. So it's important that you know this. Number two is to identify the problem at hand. Acknowledge the mistake that has been made in that scenario, whether you you know it's a breach of confidentiality, whether it's a problem of miscommunication, unprofessionalism, identify what the problem is. The more and more that you practice and the more and more you get used to the responses that are expected, you will start to accumulate a mental kind of bank of responses. So because in my preparation for the UK I'd done so many questions related to confidentiality, I already knew once I got to my exam, as soon as I saw confidentiality in breach, I already knew which, which responses were most appropriate and most inappropriate because I'd done so many questions and read so many of the answers. Now the third step in this scaffolding is to measure how serious of a problem is this? Is this a problem that needs to be escalated onto more senior members of staff? When does it need to be escalated? Is it right to address it in that moment of time or can you wait later on for a more appropriate time? Fourth step is to read the responses and make sure you understand each one of them and the fifth step is to judge each of the responses independently. Naturally you think that there's going to be, you know, one very appropriate response, one slightly inappropriate response, one very inappropriate response. But sometimes you may get a series of responses that are all very inappropriate. And that's OK, because there are going to be many different options for very inappropriate actions. So don't be thrown off if you're continuously pressing very appropriate in your responses to answers. <laughs> answers, the working out, the reasons as to why that action is very appropriate or very inappropriate. The most important thing is reading the feedback, reading not only the questions you got right but also the feedback on the questions you got wrong because for me I found that a lot of questions which I was guessing I was sometimes getting them right so it's still important that I read the responses and the reasons why they were correct. Please do not waste your time doing tens and tens and hundreds of questions if you're not going to read the reasons behind why the answer is that answer. <laughs> capitalize off the flagging element and this is true for the other sections of the UCAT but particularly for you know the SJT because it's so easy for you to overthink and then end up changing your mind follow your gut feeling click that question and if you have second thoughts kind of flag that questions and return to it going through the rest of the questions and coming back to it you're going to approach that question with a fresh mind and you may be able to see something that you may not have previously so guys we have reached the end of my video I really hope this has been useful and insightful as to how you can get a band one in your SJT the SJT is not just common sense even you know when you're in persona of a student I was still finding that I was getting questions wrong it's so important that we practice 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 and read the reasoning behind why certain actions are very inappropriate and certain actions are appropriate let me know down in the comment section below which of these tips was your favorite and the most useful to you and let me know if you want me to do a similar video for other sections of the UCAT again I'm going to shout out Medify as an amazing paid question bank which is available to you guys with over 10,000 questions. Um, I used it for my own preparation and found it really, really useful. And with that said, guys, I'm gonna love you and leave you and see you guys in the next video. I'm wishing you the best of luck for your UCATs. See you.